One of the things that's found in almost every video game is a bar. Not that kind of bar, like a health bar or a mana bar or simply a timer. In this video, we're going to go through all the steps of making a health bar. We're going to design it, make it follow the player and make it work because if it doesn't work, but of course, after watching this video, you'll be able to not only make health bars, but all kinds of bars. Except that one. As expected, we're going to start by creating the sprites. So inside Photoshop, I'm gonna create new, 720 by 1280 works. The resolution is gonna be set to 300, orientation to landscape, and the background contents is gonna be set to transparent, so there is not gonna be any backgrounds. Hit create, there we have our blank canvas, now for the health bar we're gonna need two things, a background image and a fill image. We're gonna get our rounded rectangle tool, click, drag and let go to create it, then let's make it as round as possible and change its color to white so that when we import it into unity we can change its color to whatever we want. The last thing I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna get my move tool and get it in the center. And with that being done, our fill image is ready. Now for the background, I'm gonna get this layer and I'm gonna copy it and paste it twice. So one of these layers is gonna be the background and the other one will be the outline that'll go around the background. Unchecking the visibility of two of the layers, let's first work on the background. We're gonna switch the color to black and get the opacity down till we get a decent fade. Then for the outline, check the visibility of the other layer. This one is not gonna have a fill color, but it is gonna have a black stroke. Increase the length of the stroke and put it on the outside. With that being done, as the final touch, we're gonna make sure the fill image is invisible. Then right click on one of the layers and merge visible. Now I'm gonna make sure that only one of the layers is visible and I'm gonna go up to file, export and quick export as PNG. One thing to note here is that if you export as JPG for example, it'll automatically add in a white background. So quick export as PNG, get the folder you want it to be in and give it a name. This one is the health bar BG, hit save, uncheck the visibility of this layer and check the other one. Go to file again, export, quick export as PNG and change its name to health bar fill. Hit save and just like that, we're done designing the sprites. Moving into Unity, I've gone ahead and set up an environment, a nice sky and a cool looking warrior. Now to be able to put the health bar on top of its head, we first have to import our sprites into Unity. So inside the project tab, I'm gonna right click create folder, name it sprites, and inside it, we're gonna right click again, import new assets, select them both, and import. As you can see, they look pretty weird. These aren't what we made. This is because the texture type is set to default. We're gonna change it to sprite2d and UI, apply, do the same thing for the other one, and we're good to go. To get them in the scene, we have to create a canvas first. Right click in the hierarchy, go down to UI, canvas, and because this canvas is only gonna be used for the health bar, I'm gonna name it health bar. Since we want our health bar to follow the player around and not be glued to the side of the screen, we're gonna change the render mode to world space. So now when I press F, we can see it's just a normal game object. I'm gonna reset its position. Now right clicking on our canvas, we're gonna go down to UI and create an image. This one is gonna be the background. Drag and drop the sprite into the source image and you can see we have two problems. One, it's a lot bigger than we expected and two, the proportions aren't right. We're gonna set native size and that fixes our second problem. Now to shrink it down, select the canvas link the scales and set it to 0 0.001 then get it on top of the player's head once you're all set 
right click on the background, go to UI and create another image. This one's gonna hold the fill image. So drag and drop the sprite and set native size. For the fill image, the image type is gonna be set to fill, fill method is gonna be horizontal and fill origin is gonna be set to left. And now you can see as I decrease the fill amount, it goes from right to left. Let's get the color to green and that's it for the fill image. Now right clicking on the fill image, we're gonna go down to UI and add in a text text mesh pro. It'll ask us to import the essentials. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the rec tool and get it a lot bigger, then set its position to zero. Scrolling down, I'm gonna set the alignment to the center and middle. Now we're gonna increase the font size. Let me get a number in here, scale it up. Something like that is good. And I actually like it to be a little higher. All good. Now I'm gonna scroll down again and we're gonna give it a black outline. Then to add in a shadow, we're gonna enable the underlay. The color is gonna be black. The opacity is set to 50%. Get the offset X all the way to the right, offset Y all the way to the left. And the softness is gonna be set to 0.5. I'm going to increase the font size a little bit so it's easier to see. And just like that, we're done setting up the health bar. Now to get it working, let's create a new folder called scripts. And inside it, create a new script called player. You probably already have a player script, so you can just add the following code to your script. I'm going to attach the script to the player, and I'm going to have the health bar to be a child of the player. Then to be able to use the health bar for my other objects, I'm gonna go into my prefabs folder and make a prefab out of it. With all that being done, let's open the script. Drop everything and come join us on our Discord server, where you can talk to me and other devs about your projects, your problems, and all that good stuff. Come and join the golden community. Okay, we're inside Visual Studio right now, and first off, let's remove all this and give ourselves some space. Now for our variables, we're gonna need a public game object health bar. Of course, for simplicity, I'm keeping things as public, but you're gonna wanna do a private game object health bar and then on top have a serialized field attribute. Moving on, we're going to need a public image but first we have to add in a using unityengine.ui on top of the script. And now we can have our public image fill image. Then we need a public TMP text. For this one too, we have to add in a using TM pro. And it's going to be public TMP text HP text. Last but not least, we need two floats. One for our current health and the other one for our max health. Inside the awake function, we're going to set the current health to our max health. So now as the player starts the game, he'll have full health. To handle the changes made to the health bar, we're going to make a new function called HP updater and we're going to call it inside the late update. For those of you who don't know, the late update gets called right after the update. So we're going to have the changes to our health made inside the update and then apply them to the health bar inside the late update. Now inside the HP updater, we're going to first get our fill image dot fill amount and set it to current health divided by max health. So now if our max health is 10 and our current health is 9, 9 divided by 10 is 0.9, thus the fill amount is going to be set to 0.9. Then we're gonna set our HP text text to math f dot seal current health dot to string. We're sealing the current health because if we have our max health set to 10, then we take a 1.5 damage, then our current health would be 8.5, and I don't want it to show decimal numbers. So with math f dot seal, it'll show 9. Then of course we have to convert it into a string to show it in the text. Now let's save the script and go back to Unity. 
We're gonna select the player, drag and drop the health bar, the fill image and the text into their slots. Then I'm gonna set the max health to 10 and start the game. Everything looks good, now if I get out of maximized mode and reduce the health, we can see that the health bar is being updated successfully. The last thing to do is to make the health bar rotate towards the camera. Because right now, if we rotate the player, you can see the health bar gets rotated too. Going back to the code, your first thought would be to do healthbar.transform.lookat camera.main.transform. Well, first off, you don't use camera.main. Let's create a variable for it. Public camera cam. Let's put that in and go back to Unity. You can see that it's looking at the camera and because it's looking at the camera and not forward, it's flipped. And that's why we shouldn't make it look towards the camera, but rather turn it into a billboard. A billboard in Unity always looks towards the same direction that the camera is looking at. To do that, we get the forward direction of the camera and to assign it to the health bar, we'll increase it by its own position and then we make the health bar to look at that point. So we're gonna do healthbar.transform.lookat healthbar.transform.position plus cam.transform.forward Start the game again and you can see our billboard is fully functional. Let me just align the camera with the scene view and we can see even if I rotate the player the health bar will always look towards the direction it should be looking at. With that being done the next thing I'm going to do is making it so that the color of the fill image changes based on the HP amount. So it's green at full health, red when at low HP, and orange in the middle. To do that, we're going to need a public gradient called HP gradient. And after the fill amount being calculated, we're going to say fill image.color is equal to HP gradient.evaluate fill image.fill amount. The evaluate method returns the color at the following relative position between 0 and 1 in the gradient. So after we set up our gradient, it'll return green when our fill amount is equal to 1, meaning we have full health, and so on. Back in Unity, let's get our gradient, and for the lowest color, we're gonna have the color red. For this one, we'll have it set to green, and in the middle, we're gonna add in an orange color. And I personally prefer to change it from Blend Classic to Blend Perpetual. If you feel like the other one is better, keep it at that. I'm gonna reposition the colors a bit. And that's it. To be able to test it better, I'm gonna add in a function called Take Damage that's gonna take a float damage. And inside it, I'm gonna say current health minus equals to damage. And if current health is less than or equal to 0, destroy game object. And I'm gonna call this inside the update. Every time I press the tab key, I make it reduce my health points by 1. Back to Unity, let's start the game. And as you can see, the color changes based on the health points. And finally, it destroys itself. So everything works now, and you can stop watching. But for all the guys who are still with us, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip. And that would be to make the color change and the fill amount steps smoother. Inside our code, we're gonna set the fill amount to mathf.lerp fill image dot fill amount current health divided by max health. And for the last argument, we're gonna need a public float that I'm gonna call transition factor. Put that in and that's it. This is not how you'd normally use Lerp, but this way is what works best for our interest. I'm not gonna explain Lerping in this video, but if you're unfamiliar with it, you can watch the video on the card on top, or do it the lazy way and just copy the code and learn it later. So in a nutshell, this makes our fill amount smoother, and then because we're using our fill amount to evaluate the color, it'll adopt the effects. Back to Unity. Let's set the transition factor to something like 0.1. Start the game 
and as you can see the transitions are much smoother. And that is the best way I know how to set up a health bar. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future ones. With that being said, watch this video next to learn 50 unity tips and tricks and I will see you there.